And finally, we write the transformation matrix back into the transform property. If we would evaluate this script, the orientation is being matched, but the scaling is reset to 1, 1, 1, or 100% along all three axes. If we want to keep the original scaling of this teapot, we can also grab the target scale from the transformation matrix of the second teapot, and multiply the transformation matrix that we took from the source, row 1 multiplied by the target scale, row 2 multiplied by the second component, which is y, and the row 3 multiplied by the third component of the target scale. In this case, evaluating this script will orient the second teapot exactly the same as the first teapot, but it will preserve both the position and the scaling. These operations are very similar to the internal operations in the align selection dialog of 3ds Max. Basically, it provides options to align the position, the orientation, and the scale. And internally, it performs similar operations on the transformation matrices of the objects. So, using this MaxScript uh, code, we can mimic the functionality of that dialog and achieve uh, the desired results by copying only the position, only the orientation, that means the rotation, only the scale or any combinations of those. Since the particles in a particle flow system also have their own transformation matrices, it is very easy to use a particle system as a guide for a custom scattering system where a node is aligned to each particle. Let's create a particle flow PF source, open the particle view, and create 200 particles, showing 100% of them. On the first frame, use the position icon as it is, reduce the speed a little bit, so we can actually see some meaningful results. We can add a variation of 50 so the particles don't move altogether. In addition to the rotation, we can also add a spin and we can display the particles as geometry so we can see them falling and rotating. Now, let's write a short script which takes the particle system as the target, PF source 0, 01. The source is going to be a new teapot with a radius of 2. The count is the new number of particles, we call the numParticles function in the target object, which is the particle flow source, which gives us the total number of particles in the particle source itself, no matter how many events are connected to it. And now, knowing the number of particles, we can create an array containing instances for one to the 